Happy Sunday, everybody. Um, I was going to give you an inside look at how I do like all of my meal planning and uh, meals that we do for the next few nights this week. I'm trying not to do, today's Sunday, I already said that, but I try not to do full seven days. Like I, we kind of go, I have about three meals planned that's counting tonight. But what I've done, cause I did go to the store yesterday, I went to Aldi and I had already two weeks ago gone um, to a bunch of different places to stock things up, which you can see on my other video on the Sanity Saving Kitchen um, stock up. So I have written out all of the meats that I have and I'm going off of what's fresh to use before so I don't have to put it in the freezer. So the beginning, so tonight and tomorrow are going to be, I have some salmon and some steak and I have frozen chicken and some turkey sauces that I'm gonna make for um, breakfast for my husband. Um, and I've written out all of my vegetables of what I have, um, my starches and then other being like cheese, um, Greek yogurt, I've just bought one of those shakers of ranch seasoning and I narrowed it down to um, tonight being the salmon. I have a bag of frozen mashed potatoes, which sounds kind of crazy, but it's from Trader Joe's. It's literally like ice cubes, like little um, cubes of mashed potatoes. You throw them in a bowl, put them in the microwave. I cover the bowl. Um, and after a few minutes, like I stir it and I'll put like either some milk or um, so something a little bit liquid in there, maybe some butter, stir them up, microwave it until they get hot. And they're very good. They taste very similar to homemade. Sometimes I use it as a filler if I'm trying to make a lot of homemade. I'll do um, Yukon Gold and then mix in the frozen that Trader Joe's has. I actually put um, a couple bags of the frozen in my crock pot for Thanksgiving and nobody knew the difference. So um, I love that stuff and it's a really good price. Um, and I have some frozen green beans. So we're gonna do the salmon with some lemon um, and some seasoning, mashed potatoes and green beans. Tomorrow night, Monday, I have, I don't eat meat on Mondays, I fast meat, um, but I'm gonna make a teriyaki steak with a bunch of vegetables and a stir fry and just not eat the steak. And then Tuesday, I'm probably, right now I have something that I'm kind of winging, but I'm hoping that an idea will kind of come to mind. I'm going to thaw my last package of chicken and do something kind of Mexican inspired. Um, I like cooking it in the crock pot like with some adobo. Other than that, I don't really know. I may do like black beans and corn and do like a chicken dip because I don't like eating soup in the summer and that my mind went to like, I could do taco soup, like the chicken version, but it's so hot. That's <laughs> what I'm gonna have to, Sometimes I'll be like, I'll have the ingredients and I'll just be driving down the road and an idea will come to me and I'll be like, oh, that's a good oh, thing, which by Tuesday, I'm not gonna be upset if I have to go to the store um, and just grab a couple things if I end up taking it a different direction. But for right now, those are the next few. So tonight is going to be salmon night. Tomorrow will be teriyaki. Tuesday will be some kind of Mexican chicken. Um, Wednesday will be easy, like leftovers night. Um, and that's just enough to get through until then the fridge. But Sunday for me right now is like a lot of planning and that to make the ease, the week go by a little bit easier. All right. I will show you guys a little, uh, glimpse into each meal as we go this week, but have a good rest of your weekend. Okay. Here is Sunday night's dinner. This is actually one fourth of the two pieces of salmon. I was able to cut them in half. I season it with this black pepper grill and mates green beans. I put honey and brown sugar in to make the, to balance out the spiciness of the fish. And I left the mashed potatoes alone, except for like a splash of milk while they were cooking. Um, so pretty simple. It made our kitchen like super hot since it's summertime right now, but I've already tasted and it's all really great. Happy Monday, everybody. Um, I wanted to explain a little better the recipe that I did last night because I know that I did not explain it very well. I just kind of was like, here's what we're eating. Um, everything all at once was kind of crazy right at the end of that. So um, my daughter's asleep in the back seat, so I'm um, letting her nap. Everything um, was just like a rush to get it all done. And then by the time it was done, it was like, okay, we gotta eat. But anyway, I had a bag of frozen French cut green beans from Trader Joe's that I started all of 
I started those before making the fish and the mashed potatoes because they take a little longer to get done. I don't like them super hard, like super crispy, but um, I don't like them mushy either. So I always start those first while like the skillet for the fish heats up and I was seasoning the fish while the green beans were going and um, I saved the mashed potatoes for last because I wanted those to be the hottest or like I wanted those to be hot along with everything else. And since they were microwavable, um, I did those last so that they would be hot along with everything else. So I did the cast iron skillet, um, I put some olive oil on it and um, seasoned the fish with that blackened seasoning and it had the scale on the underside of the fish. So I only put the seasoning on the flesh side and um, laid it down in the pan um, season side first so that it would um, fry it up really well, which I don't, unless you have done it before, be very, very careful because it can fill your kitchen up with like uh, smoke and stuff like that if you're not careful. I had my fan on, I had a ceiling fan on, it did get everything really hot and um, just the way that blackened seasoning is, um, it gets kind of smoky. So like I was kind of like coughing a little bit. It made the kitchen really smoky, not too bad because like I've done it before. So I knew what to expect, but be very careful if you've never done it before. You don't have to do the fish that way, but I'm just having that disclaimer in case anybody saw that and was like, oh, let's do some blackened fish or blackened chicken or whatever. It's not that easy, but it's, I don't, it's more for, um, the kind of, st the, um, ovens that have like the fan built into it. I used to have one at my old house, so that's how I've done this before. But anyway, um, with the green beans, I took like a spoonful of, um, brown sugar, sprinkled them on after they had been cooking a little bit and let it caramelize. And I just did like a drizzle of honey over them um, and put some like salt and pepper on them when it was on my plate. Um, so that was about it. It was pretty, it's one of those meals like I had to have everything going all at once, which is fine, but like um, it can be kind of crazy and that's why I wanted to explain a little better now. Okay, today is Monday and there has been a change in, um, my original plan for tonight's dinner of the teriyaki steak. So my husband informed me last night when we were eating dinner that he's doing um, side work tonight. So since I wasn't going to eat the steak, I decided I'm just not going to make that meal tonight. I stopped by, my daughter and I were running around. Um, there's a little farmer's market up the road from our house that has like fresh produce and stuff. So I stopped in there and got a little bit of yellow squash, a green zucchini, um, and an avocado for Wednesday. So I'm doing the teriyaki steak tomorrow night on Tuesday. And Wednesday is some kind of Mexican chicken. I have an avocado now for that. I will show what I come up with to do with all of the produce that I got today. I'll probably get on Pinterest. That was something that I meant to say yesterday that I do when I'm planning my meals is to try to get inspiration from like different sources like getting on Pinterest sometimes I'll just like take a few of the ingredients that I have and search like any casserole or something like that and a lot of times I'll get on Food Network and watch some of my favorite shows like The Kitchen or something like that and see what recipes they're doing and find inspiration there um, or just getting on Instagram or something or YouTube and just seeing what people are doing and um, pulling from that either taking the recipe exactly or like tweaking it to be the way that we would want it to be but don't be scared to take some ingredients and try things out um, I'll show you guys later what I end up doing for dinner tonight okay it is prep time for dinner time and I totally forgot when Mommy. say that from that farmers market I also got this honker of a green tomato to add to what all I got as options for dinner tonight. We'll just call it Meatless Monday. Um, so I've decided what I'm going to do is going to be fried green tomato and the yellow squash, but I'm gonna do it oven baked. So I, my, I looked up a couple of uh, recipes on Pinterest and I'm glad that I did because the bake time on the green tomato was a lot longer than I, I would have expected. I've fried them before in the pan, but I figured it'd be easier just to put them in the oven and make macaroni and cheese for my daughter. Um, then my husband's gonna have the salmon leftovers. Um, so the bake time on the tomatoes was 40 minutes um, and then the squash is about 15. So I'm going to go ahead and get the tomatoes in the oven. 
I'll show you what all I have that I'm about to um, batter them in and everything and what I'm going to put it on. Okay, so I made the um, green tomatoes a lot thinner than what other people would have done. This one's probably not going to be able to be used. Um, they're pretty thin. I want them to be pretty crispy, so the 40 minute cook time may not apply. Usually like when you go somewhere, they're a lot thicker than this, but I'm really wanting crispy. Um, so I may be able to get away with doing it on less time. Um, but anyway, I have two eggs whisked, whisked it's hard to say, whisked up <laughs> with a splash of uh, cool, cold water to uh, thin it out a little bit. I may need to add another egg since I am putting I'll show these two. I'm going to cut these up also, um, but they won't cook as long as the tomatoes. And here I have Trader Joe's organic flaxseed meal that um, I put in smoothies a good bit. I use it um, one time I did fried green tomatoes in the skillet and put a little bit on it and it made them like really crispy. So I'm hoping that that really crisp them up since I'm baking them. And I did about half of the box of this cornmeal. I had about a cup left of this. So this, that's what this mixture is with salt and pepper in it. You can see like the little yellowy is the jiffy um, and the darker is the flax mill, but it's all mixed up with salt and pepper. I'm going to lay them out on this pan. So I'm gonna coat them. I guess I'll show you one process. We'll do one that's a whole. Um, you can either use your fingers or a fork. Um, I don't mind getting dirty. I'm more about speed than I don't really care if I get dirty. But, okay. It will probably look burnt when it comes out, but um, that was just the, the way that the flax baked. I've done it before and uh, it turned out pretty crispy. Um, and you will want to do salt and pepper, otherwise they will not have much flavor. I'm going to add a little bit more. Um, I have my oven already preheated to 415 and I'm going to um, put the tomatoes in while I cut up and do the squash. Since the squash is going to be pretty thin also, I may just do it on a pan of foil since it's smaller. I think it'll bake okay. It won't be um, as crispy as what I'm hoping this is, but it's okay. Um, I might be the only one eating all of this, but we'll see. Um, I'll show you guys how the tomatoes look, how the, I'll show you some more along the way. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> all right. Guess what I forgot to do? I did not coat the um, cookie sheet that I put the tomatoes on um, with any kind of oil. So it kind of stuck a little bit, but um, it's still, uh, nothing was ruined or anything. That's like a big thing that I've learned with cooking is like, don't panic, like take a deep breath, like everything will work out, it'll be okay. If not, you can just order a pizza. Um, but I'll show you guys, I took, okay, so I cooked the tomatoes by themselves for about eight to 10 minutes um, and then flipped them and then put the squash in there. Cause I was like, it, the tomatoes, if they're in there 40 minutes, they'll be like black. Um, so then they cooked with the squash another like 10 minutes and then I flipped the squash and flipped the tomatoes again since it wasn't greased that way. I was trying to prevent it from sticking. Um, and then like I did my macaroni and cheese in there at some point cause I wanted to bake that. So after I pulled the macaroni and cheese out, I broiled everything in um, the oven, the squash and the tomatoes. So now they're out. I'm going to show you the texture of all of it. Um, I'll flip the camera around. Okay, here's the where you can see that the tomato got kind of stuck. But cutting it as thin as I did actually worked out in my favor. It's paper thin, but it's not super well that got floppy because I was doing that. Here's a more thicker one. It's still pretty firm. Um, here's one that got kind of stuck. See there? Doing pretty well. Um, considering it's not fried, like I avoided, actually, technically it did not touch any oil and they, look how crisp this is. It is not floppy at all. But anyway, so I'm going to show you guys how, what I'm going to dip it in once I get it plated up and everything. Okay, so the sauce that I'm dipping them in, I honestly thought about when I was figuring this out, do I want to make these spicy and do a creamy sauce or are these pretty, not plain, there's salt and pepper on them, and do a spicy sauce and I went with Jim and Nick's barbecue, Morgan Company white sauce. Um, there's other, a few other brands of this. 
Anybody that doesn't live in the South, you have to shake it up really good. Anybody that doesn't live in the South may have to order it online. But it's to me, it has a kick. We dip the um, tuna cakes that I make in them. In it, um, I've made coleslaw with it. It's really great. Um, so that is what I've already tried both the squash and the fried green tomatoes. And this is just like a really great meatless meal. Um, it's like a southern comfort meal because the macaroni and cheese and like I just love like fried green tomatoes are so good. And this was like a healthier version because it did not touch any oil. Um, the flax has health benefits to it. Um, it's all really great. Um, I'm not going to really go into detail on the macaroni and cheese of what I did. I just did a basic cheese sauce, which you can find online, and um, tossed it in the sauce. You can do cracker crumbs with that, but I, I'm getting enough bread in here. My daughter's stuck in her high chair, so I'm going to eat. Everybody have a good night. Hey guys, happy Tuesday. Um, I'm, today's dinner requires pretty little prep. I'm gonna show you guys what I'm about to do right now as it's a little bit after three um, and I'll be making dinner in a few hours. So I'm trying to kind of set myself up for success so that if it's meltdown time with my child, everything can be thrown together pretty quickly. Um, so I'll show you what all we have going on for tonight, which is teriyaki steak night. Okay, I have this strip of top round steak that I got from Aldi for $5.54. Um, I'm about to cut it up into strips and have it marinating in this teriyaki sauce from Publix with some crushed red pepper. Um, I'm not really going for sweet and spicy. If you were, well actually, I, I was gonna say, I have some pineapple juice I could put in there if I, if I want it to be sweeter um, anyway <laughs> this is how like much I wing things but I think trying things like that is how you really learn what you can get away with <laughs> with cooking okay the vegetables going in it is this green zucchini that I got yesterday from that farmers market um, I'm not, I don't like doing the whole circles when it's stir-fry like this I'll do the half moons um, I'm gonna do some of this seasoning blend from Publix which is onion bell pepper celery um, and some Trader Joe's microwave rice since that only cooks in three minutes that'll be the last thing that I make um, you just put it on a plate microwave it and it's good to go it's really great with like Asian style foods so right now all I'm going to do is cutting up the steak put it in a bowl with some marinade and um, while later on tonight while the skillet is heating up I'll cut up the zucchini that won't take very long so and I'll be cooking the steak and the zucchini probably at the same time because they both probably take because we don't like our steak super well done but that's what I'm going to be doing tonight I'll show you guys once it's all done I can't promise that I'll be able to explain much more depending on how everything's going closer to dinner time okay here's the steak after I have put the teriyaki sauce the red pepper and I did put a splash of this pineapple juice from Trader Joe's they come in four packs for less than three dollars I like to keep them on hand for smoothies and sometimes I'll put some in uh, lemonade it's really good so I guess we'll be doing sweet and sweet spicy sauce with this tonight um, something I was gonna say that I forgot is I do try to alternate um, with meals doing like we did fish Sunday last night was meatless for me my husband ate some fish and some spaghetti that we had had last week um, so I try to like do red meat in between the whiter meats so that to kind of make my husband feel a little better <laughs> I could do without it but um, he likes red meat so I try to alternate and not do like chicken 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 or chicken fish chicken fish or whatever so I uh, just try to like mix it up so yeah I'm gonna cover this with some plastic wrap and put it in the fridge until I'm ready to make dinner and I'll just be dumping this in the skillet um, making sure the skillet's pretty oiled Okay, I wanted to show you guys something really quick. Um, this is kind of what it looks like after I've made dinner. Um, I'm like sweating because I ate outside and it's like 90 degrees out. But I wanted to show you guys something that I had to do with the sauce because as you all saw, uh, marinating it in that bowl 
Um, by the time I poured it into the skillet, the marinade was like, I mean, clearly it was liquid. It was like water. And then cooking the steak in that, the steak had fat release, so it watered it down even more. So I cooked the steak for a few minutes on each side. Um, the liquid was simmering. It was on like a low heat. Um, and it was so watery, I took the steak out I put the zucchini in so that it would absorb some of the liquid and then took that out and I made, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the slurry of cornstarch where you some water. I did equal parts to where I kind of filled this up a little bit as you can see. I didn't pour all of it in there clearly. I took a spoonful at a time and put it in there and I put more, I already put my teriyaki sauce up to thicken it up. And I put, um, I turned the heat up a little bit, tasted it, I meant to say. I tasted it and it was a little bit, it was missing something. So I added a little bit, like a splash of this rice vinegar. I could smell that it was already, just by doing that, it was what really what it was missing. And then it was thickening up from the cornstarch. So I was whisking in more teriyaki sauce to kind of get it to just like a little bit at a time, get it to the consistency that I wanted. It ended up getting, to be like a glaze um, and I did add a little bit of sriracha that was like my preference of I wanted it to be spicier since I tasted it the red pepper wasn't doing justice so I added some sriracha um, you can see behind the zucchini and the steak on that plate in the picture and so I poured the glaze over it did the rice took the picture I've made a second bag of rice because that one bag is not gonna be enough when my husband gets home put it back in the skillet the skillet was still hot and I stirred it up to mix that glaze in with and then ate it over the rice like that it was really 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 great um, I've bought the bottles of the already like in the Asian part of the supermarket um, where there will be like general sows or something like that I've done those plenty of times and this tasted way better um, my daughter actually ate some of the steak, which is like miraculous. She doesn't normally eat meat. So her eating that like is a big testament that it was really good. So I can't wait for my husband to get home and try it. But um, yeah, so that's how it went. Hey everybody, happy Wednesday. We have one more meal before I'm done with this and can post it. Um, tonight was a night that I just knew that I wanted to do chicken and I wanted to do something Mexican. For sure the Crack pack. Excited. Uh -huh. I went to the store earlier and like super quickly and grabbed two potatoes, which I know you might be thinking, I thought you said you were doing Mexican. I am. I am doing something that I was inspired to do by the show Diners, Drive-Ins and Dives, where they went to, I don't know what specific ethnicity it was. It was something Hispanic. I don't want to say the wrong thing. A restaurant that had a loaded baked potato that was, that was baked, chicken and adobo sauce which i love adobo sauce um i'll show you more of that um and they did a really intense loaded baked potato that i'm not going to do because it's one like even the people that loved it that ate it all the time they're like you have to take a nap after this because it's so heavy i'm do going to try to do a little bit of a lighter version not like a like clean version or anything um i will still have like dairy on it and stuff but right now it's almost two o'clock, so I'm just going ahead and putting the chicken in the crock pot with the adobo. Adobo sauce is one of my favorite Mexican seasonings. It literally says Mexican condiment. Um, it's like the espresso of seasonings because it's like a paste in here, really condensed soup, a lot of flavors condensed into a paste. I just uh, scraped what was left in here out into a bowl. The reason being because if you buy a whole thing of it, and you're putting it on raw meat, you do not want, you wanna take out what you're gonna use first and not use um, touch, cause your hands are gonna to be touching the raw meat. You don't wanna grab this again. Or if you've had like a spoon or a knife or something, you don't wanna stick it back in there. You have to throw the whole thing away once it's been exposed to the raw meat. I emptied it out because I had only had like about this much left. So I'm gonna use what's left on my two chicken breasts that were in a frozen package I thawed this morning. To Put a little bit of vegetable stock in my crock pot right now. Um, I have it on low. Hi. I'm going to show the chicken some love by rubbing it down with my adobo and then sticking it. Um, since it's in the crock pot, I'm not going to be as particular about making sure every inch of it is covered. But um, don't be scared to get your hands dirty. Just make sure you can wash them and don't touch anything else. Okay. 
here we go. Okay, here's one piece coated pretty well. Dropping it in. Okay, here it is, all nice and coated. I'm also going to sprinkle on some of this chili lime seasoning blend from Trader Joe's just to add some flavor to it. I can just shake it up, shake it. Um, you can put whatever seasonings you want. You don't have to add anything. I'm just doing it because I did this recently and it was pretty good. I'll probably let it cook for a few hours and flip it over just to distribute that evenly. But you guys have fun. Something else I'm going to do as like a side for dinner tonight is um, a bean corn salsa. Um, I might dip chips in it. You can put it on the baked potatoes. You can eat it just as a, like a side. Um, I'm not going to do all of it here. I'm just going to explain. I'm going to chop up this tomato, like dice it up, put strained can of corn and beans like strain both of them and some of this ranch powder um, I just got this the other day and some chili lime seasoning to have with that either as a dip or um, put on it on the potato whatever I'm also going to do my I have another video of this so I'm not going to show you guys today but if you want another recipe for my sour cream substitute because it is baked potatoes you would normally put sour cream on them I'm going to do it with avocado Greek yogurt and lemon um, so the video for that is on my channel it's just the sour cream substitute I'm going to have that to top it top the potatoes with too I mentioned earlier was what they did with the potatoes so the reason why it was so heavy was because they made these huge baked potatoes and um, they baked them. They made this butter sauce that had like all these seasonings in it and like stuffed the potato. They like cracked it open, stuffed the potato with the butter sauce and like a bunch of cheese. Like, I don't remember all the kinds of cheese. Like I know mozzarella was one of them. They put a bunch of cheese in it, put it back in the oven and then topped it with the chicken that has the adobe that was baked in the adobo. And there's a lot of cheese on this potato. So it was like a big cholesterol baked potato, but we're just gonna do um, pretty basic. Okay, can you tell it's like the end of this streak and I'm ready to be done. Okay, I've had the chicken resting outside of the crock pot for a few minutes to cool um, and set. I was gonna cut it open and show you guys just like how much it watches on the on what I'm showing you. It's just like I barely even moved that. It is so tender. I'm so excited about this. Okay, here is the salsa. And I had some as a snack earlier with some chips. Here's the baked potato. I put the chicken back in um, the crock pot over here. That's why it looks um, pinkish. It's done, I swear. You guys saw it earlier. And here is my, I took a scoop out of my um, blend of the substitute sour cream. So I'm just going to drizzle it over. Um, and I did put some salsa. I have the baked potato cheese, some salsa, and the chicken. So I'm pretty excited about this. That was actually a really great meal. I'm glad I tried it. It was, it was different, but in a good way. Um, I did put some Tabasco sauce and made it spicy because the um, sour cream substitute was like really cool so it went well with the spicy and the chicken was very tender um, the cheese melted on there just made everything really great definitely going to be doing that one again um, and other than having to make um, the salsa and stuff it was really easy because putting the the chicken in the crock pot and then the baked potatoes in the oven if I wasn't doing that other salsa that I would have had like hardly any work to do for that meal um, so it was a really great one. I'm excited because there's a lot of chicken left. Um, so tomorrow we'll be able to do something with that, either nachos or quesadillas or something. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. Um, it's been interesting having a, <laughs> filming every night this week so far. So if you have any questions about anything, if I went too quickly, um, if there's any recipes you have that you want me to try out, I'll just leave a uh, comment down below. Make sure you subscribe. Um, thanks for watching. Have a good night.